So I took this for a quick test ride and uh, almost put it down. The front brake is locking up quite bad. So we're gonna take this uh, front caliper off and rebuild it. I'm um, gonna strip it down, clean it out. I'm guessing the seals are probably gone. Have to order some new seals for it, stuff like that. Uh, fairly easy to do. Um, what I like to do is I actually use the brake pressure to pull the pots out, the pistons out, because uh, otherwise it's just a real struggle to get them out. I think this one's just a two piston, but pretty easy, just a couple bolts. And uh, we'll pop that caliper off and get the pistons out. So on this one, it's got 12 millimeter. And then top one is 14. quick we're gonna crack this bleeder valve here and hopefully release some of the pressure so I can get this to move she is quite jammed in here there we go Whew. yeah you can see right in here that the pistons Absolutely frozen. Oh boy, those pins are very seized. We might have to get this up on the workbench and see if we can even tap those pins out and then put it all back together. So I'm just gonna screw that. That seems to be missing a crush washer. So there's a couple of pins right here that come out this side, there and there. And that's what holds the pads in. You can see how worn, unevenly worn the pads are. That was dragging for a while. Got the shop right here just to clean up all this old brake fluid. So we're just gonna gently try to tap these pins out. Starting to move. Really not moving very fast. How stuck this is. Success. There is one thing. Actually, not in terrible shape. I'll throw it on the wire wheel, clean it up. Definitely salvageable. Let's see if we can get this other one done. Almost there. All right. Got it. Jeez, I'm broke. Now let's see if we can get these pots out of here. Just a simple two piston. Not too crazy, but they are. <gasps> Absolutely stuck. So, what I like to do is pop these back on, put these. Uh, old shoes in, old pads in, that stops them from coming too, too far out. All right, let's see if we can pop this out. I don't know if these pots are gonna be saveable. They're pretty chewed up. See all the corrosion in here. All right, so we're gonna reattach the caliper. I'm just gonna use the impact just to... No ugga duggas. Just tight enough. Throw a couple pads in here to block off one of the pistons from moving. So I have to go on like that. Now, we're gonna pump that front brake up. Mm. 
Yep, this one is starting to move. So, what we're gonna do is take a couple of pads, stick them in there to block it. And now the other one, you can see that one of the ones starting to move. Pad, throw it right across. Allow both of the pistons to kind of work out. Still don't want to come quite yet. See, as soon as you lose one, that one is right on the edge. I can see it starting to yeah, pop. Okay, that's all right though. So what we do, put that piston back in its spot. We're just gonna grab a pad in there and now since that one's a loose let's see if we can get that one to pop it's right there Ooh, it goes all on my brake fluid There we go, both our pistons are out. That is some nasty, nasty fluid. All right, let's get this back on the bench. You can see the two pistons are in pretty bad shape. All right, we're back on the bench. And as you can see, we have our two slide pins, our two pistons, and our housing, our body for the caliper. Uh, O-rings are pretty thrashed in there. So we're going to go ahead and pop those out, replace them. It's a lot of just nasty sludge in there. Go ahead and clean those out. I'm going to try and very gently wire wheel these to get some of the corrosion off of them. And we're going to have to wire wheel these as well. So let's start with the pins just because it's easy. Pretty good before and after. Just a quick job and it really cleans them right up. So that was just a couple 30 seconds or so and still a little bit of corrosion on this one. But you can see it does a pretty good job. Let's see if we can get that last bit. took the rust off but you can really see the camera would want to focus it actually took the plating off there you go you can see that right there it actually took the plating off of the bolt not the worst thing in the world eventually yeah sure it's gonna have to get replaced but for now it's gonna be just fine right, let's see how these pistons look get the junk off them real quick and Pretty shit. A lot of corrosion up towards the top end. Don't know if I'm gonna be able to clean that up. All right, so I actually cleaned up a little bit better than I expected on the, uh, the wheel there. It doesn't feel too bad, actually. Looking at the seals in here, I mean, they are absolutely thrashed. I pulled one out real quick and you can see it's really grungy and disgusting. So now let's clean up the second one. Mm. 
and again, not too bad. Cleaned up pretty good. There's definitely still a little bit of corrosion right on the edge. Not too terribly worried about it because the pistons are gonna sit fairly deep, uh, but they're not gonna sit all the way in the, ho the housing. You're gonna have a little bit of play. So it should be okay. We'll throw those right aside. All right, let's pop these seals out. There's this first one. Wow, boy, that one is really, really grody in there. there we are. That one was really stuck in. So this is a little bit wider one compared to the top O-ring. I've seen some bad ones. This might be the worst I've done. There we go. All right, and there's the other one. There you can see. So you can see in here now. You got the top seal and then the thicker o-ring this one's gonna go in that bottom groove right there but you can see all the junk that's built up in those grooves and what that does that'll press the o-rings out as well causing even more friction on top of the corrosion that was on there so we're going to go ahead and clean those all out with uh, a toothbrush or maybe a brass brush and some bright clean until they're nice and bright. And then we'll put the new seals in and put the uh, the uh, pistons back in. All right, so we got our rebuild kit. It comes with all our new seals, new crush washers, uh, new dust covers, and new bleeder valves. So we can completely uh, replace every part on here, which is great except for the housing. And I'm gonna keep the pistons and slide pins. But other than that, all new parts we still have our old junky seals we can throw those out but first things first we need to finish up cleaning out the uh, the original uh, caliper body because it's definitely pretty grimy in here so to do that we use this really special tool a toothbrush a little bit of brake clean. Just go ahead and spray a little bit in there and we're gonna go in and scrub it. You can see just with a little bit of scrubbing they really do come back to life pretty quickly. Now the biggest thing to clean out is these grooves right here. You want to make sure those grooves are completely clean. Like see, there's still some schmutz in this one because if they're not uh, it'll cause the seals to stick out into the uh, pistons, causing unnecessary friction. The pistons won't retract properly, and you'll get uneven brake pad wear or sticking uh, pads on the, the rotors. All right, so now those look pretty good. Not too upset with that. Just going to take a little bit closer look. It's hard to see through the camera. There's two different seals here. You have a wider one. You can, there you go. You got a wider one and a thinner one. The wider one goes in the bottom, uh, in the bottom groove, obviously a little bit bigger. And then the top one, or the thinner one, goes right on the top. Pretty straightforward. Well, let's get the second one in. Again, I'm starting with the lower ring. Don't really know. If other people do it differently, that's just my preference. So you can see this one rotated on me. It's got a little bit of a twist in it. Now you can see it's just in there, nice and flush all the way around. Got this top ring in. There we go. New seals put in. 
I'm just gonna put a dab of grease on them so I can get the uh, get the pistons in there. Okay. You want to make sure that you just very gently and squarely putting these pistons back in. All right, here they go. Nice. Perfect. No resistance there. Slid right in. On that side. A little bit of resistance on that, but not too bad. And there we go. Our pistons are reset into the caliper. Crush washers I'm going to leave in the packaging for now. Don't need to uh, take those out until we put it all back together. Now, let's see what we got here for dust jackets. Sent me three new dust jackets. Drop that back in, remove that, and then these will pop out. All right, so these have a little flange. You just gotta stick in this hole and they expand back out into a groove. There we go. All right. One completely rebuilt caliper off of a uh, 1982 CB450T. This should be the same process for any of the old uh, Honda or CB series uh, 400s. I can't remember what this exact rebuild kit is good for, but it's same basic process for all the, uh, all the calipers. So let's get the new pads. Uh, we'll put them in, show you guys how you put them in, and then we'll get it mounted up onto the bike. All right, so now we have the new pads here. Uh, first thing we're going to do is grease up these slide pins right here. And then we're going to install the pads into the caliper. So now with these, there's a little bit of spring tension that keeps them in there, keeps everything tight. So we're gonna drop them both in. And then with these, they come in from this side. I'm gonna drop them right in that hole and try and line up those holes in the caliper, or holes in the pads. There we go. That's where the clip's gonna hang on. Perfect. And now with this one, we're gonna have to apply pressure to these to get that pin to be able to line up. There we go, that one's a little bit easier. And there we are. Pretty straightforward. Now with this, particular bike there's a clip that sits on here right underneath these two uh two pins there's a slight gap that it sits in we take that out you can see right there just slides right in there and is held on with a single nut or single bolt just a 10 millimeter Tighten that up, and now we're ready to reinstall this on the bike. We're going to go ahead and reinstall the caliper onto the bike. Get our brake line out of the way. Like this, you got to kind of insert them like that. 
slide it up and it drops right on. It's a 14 millimeter bolt here. Let's get that started. And a 12 millimeter here. I'm use the impact just to drive them home, not tighten them up at all. Let's do that by hand. Really don't want to break all these. And this thing has quite a bit of torque to it. Now for the banjo bolt, you want to make sure that you replace your copper crush washers. You got one that goes on first. Go through the brake hose fitting. Put the other one on. And then line that up right there. 14 as well. It is. Go ahead, tighten that up. And now we're reinstalled. Now, since we did completely rebuild it, it is 100% empty of brake fluid. So we're going to take apart the reservoir and bleed uh, this set. Now All right. I bled the front brakes. Uh, and while editing this, realized I've somehow lost all the footage of that. I'll give you a quick synopsis. I used a really cheap vacuum bleeder from Harbor Freight and actually it worked out really well. Um, it's going to be kind of a pain in the ass when you're bleeding something uh, that you've completely rebuilt the caliper on. You've got a ton of air in the system. Uh, it took a little while to make sure you always have your reservoir topped up because the last thing you want to do is start sucking air back through and you're just starting all over. But now we've got front brakes that work. Don't lock up the rear wheel and uh, try to kick you off. Um, started working on the tail for this. Uh, I've got more parts on the way as well. Uh, I do want to switch out the bars. I hate these little drag bars that it has on it. Um, just, they're not, I don't know, they're not what I want. So, I do have a set of, I think these are Flanders handlebars, uh, off of one of my CB750s, and that will bring it up just a little bit, and I actually think I have another set. I'm not sure which ones I want to go with yet. So I have that option. Now I also have this set, which just brings up a little bit more, uh, so you're not so over on it. I don't see any reason that these won't work. I really don't know what these are off of. These might be off of my old CB. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I, I have several sets of handlebars and no idea where they came from. But that's a little bit nicer, a little bit more upright. I just don't like the, the drag bars on it. So we're gonna try these out, see how that feels. Um, I had a set of mini apes on an old KZ I had. They were like almost buckhorns. They turned your wrists in. They were the most uncomfortable handlebars I've ever had. So, but I want these up a little bit more, try and return it more to the original factory look for them. So that'll be another thing that we're gonna work on soon. Uh, but currently I wanna finish up the tail and uh, I found a new front tire for this. So I'm gonna try to get those switched over and actually take this thing for a ride. Uh, it's March now, the weather's changing. It looks like spring has sprung early for New England, which is nice. I took my bike up today and it was, it was very nice, very enjoyable. So I want to get this together enough so I can at least rip it up and down the road um, and make sure that everything's working and, and functioning the way it should. So hopefully uh, by the end of the month, we'll have it out and riding and do a little review on it. So see you guys in the next one.